All right, my man, state your name. Let him know you on Real Talk with Nick. All right, what's good, what's good? It's Ibrahim Hussein uh-huh. out here in Harlem representing all right. the mice. All right, he's on Real, real Talk real with talk Nick. Real Talk with Nick, for that's, real. That's what's up, man. Nick right. fan, right? Yeah, 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 for real. All right, man. Talk to me, man. Are you happy with the way the Knicks is orchestrating this offseason with the trades and so forth? Let's start off with Mikhail Bridges, man. Okay. Are you happy with uh, that Mikhail Bridges, man? We gave up a lot of picks for him. Yeah. Some, The majority of Nick fans saying, you know what? We don't care about that. Right, exactly. You exactly. feel me? You share exactly. that same... I, say that, I share that same sentiment, though, man, because... You know, they all came out at the same time. They came out of Villanova the same time. The chemistry with the championship, the NCAA championship. I'm not saying that the NCAA championship is going to translate into the NBA, but at the same time, we see that Macau Bridges is definitely an important piece, and he and he's a star in the league. You know what I mean? And he's pretty much just as much as I feel like he was just as much an important piece of the Nets as to Brunson was to the Knicks. At a different position too. So if we able to combine that, and they already got the chemistry, yo, that that it really might be something. It might be something special. How you know? important is chemistry, man, mm. among players? I mean, yo, I mean, chemistry is everything. You know what I mean? Because even me, as 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 a, as an avid, as an athlete, you know, I'm 40 years old now, so you know, I'm pretty much retired. But I know the importance of it. Don't matter how big you, I see a dude come up on the court, seven foot six, ten, da 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 da. But I don't have no fear because at the end of the day, I know the guys that I'm playing with. You know what I'm saying? I know what the guys is going to lay their stuff, they stuff on the line. Like one thing that I see with the Knicks is that, like Brunson, he's a good rebounding guard. And everybody else, you got heart, good rebound. So they that right there is going to make up for the size right there because one thing I was mentioning about was Harkenstein and how I know that he's going to be sorely missed. Because we can't keep Mitchell Robinson on the fucking floor. We can't keep him on the floor. He's speaking of Mitch, it. speaking of Mitch. Yeah. Uh, let's speaking of Mitch, mm-hmm. man. Do you feel it's time to let him go? I mean, it's not time to let him go. You know what I'm saying? Because you just got rid of Hawkinstein. So you can't you can't get rid of Mitch. You know what I mean? Not right now. You gotta at least give him another another year or something like that, you know? And I, I wonder what, what what's his contract looking like. I wonder how many years is left on his joint. That I don't know. I, I think he just re signed or, or Yeah, yeah, you know. What I mean so, but but do you look at Mitch as being injury prone? I feel like he is injury prone, but at the end of the day though, a lot of times as as, as athletes once you get injured, it's like you sort of don't really re-injure that same situation. It's like you kind of injure somewhere else. So I feel like it was his right ankle and then his left ankle. So hopefully, fuck, his ankles is good now. Just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying ain't going to get broke no more. Now, with the fact of hardest thing going to the Oklahoma Thunder, man, what is going to be missed, man, now that heat? Because did, 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 did Josh Giddy leave? Did jo- with Josh- no, Josh is here, but I'm talking about hardest time. No, Josh that, Giddy. Did he come over to the Knicks? I'm not sure. I think he. I, I don't know if he was in that trade because if we get if we got Josh Giddy, that's a good pickup right there because he's a fucking he's a big man that could that could do some things. He's not as physical as Hawkinson, but he could do some things. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, yo, Hawkinson was uh, a fucking energy guy, and I feel like we could get a lot of those coming out of coming out of the draft or picking them up, you know what I'm saying, in free agency or anybody. Yo, there's a lot of motherfuckers, 6'10", 6, 6'11", 6, dudes that, that that's scrapping right now. So I feel like we, 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 we could replace Hardestine. We could replace him. You feel Hardestine could be replaced? I, I feel like he could be replaced, especially if we could um if we could uh, 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 get along uh, Grimes, that, that big-ass dude that we have. Is right. It? Grimes. Uh, You're talking about Jericho Sims. Jericho Sims. If he could come along a little bit, that more, that dude is big as hell. So if he could kind of step it up a little bit, because not last year, and I feel like Hawkenstein kind of outplayed him. That's why he didn't play as much as he did the year before. Okay. So if he could kind of step up and do a little bit more, you know, he should be good. I, I got a question for you, man. Right. A lot of Nick critics are saying that the Knicks got too many undersized guards, man. And like, and like I said before, do you undersi- think that – Go ahead. What, what's the question? What's yeah, the yeah, question? the undersized guards. You mm-hmm. think that's going to be a, a, a setback? Like I, I mentioned before earlier in the interview, is that that's what I like about Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart and Deep Vincenzo and Mikael Bridges 
and us losing Hawkenstein because Hawkenstein really came with that with the rebound. But the we have good rebounding guards. We have good re- Jalen Brunson averaged what seven rebounds a game. DiVincenzo was an excellent rebounder. You know what I'm saying? Mikael Bridges, a really good rebound. And you already know Josh Hart is scrap. He getting all the rebounds. So our rebounding guards, I feel like, is going to make up for that. But we still need that defensive presence. We still need that shot blocking, that shot blocking presence. You know what I'm saying? We definitely need that shot blocking presence. So we need another big man. Yes, yeah, so and I hope, I hope uh, so, 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 Simmons. So. I hope Simmons kind of kind of steps up. What about Precious? Uh, you know, Precious is always a good. They were talking about trading him, though. They was talking about getting rid of him, but uh, Precious, he's on the smaller side, though. He's not a he. He's he's a good defender below the rim, but above the rim, I don't think you know. what I'm saying he's really going. He's really going to be able to do it. Do you think he'll be a good backup behind Mitchell Robinson? Hell no. He's too fucking small. Precious. Yeah. He's too small. He's too small. We need a, We need. We need like. Like Hawkins team was Hawkins time to back up to Mitchell Robinson. No, he was at one point he that was. he started uh, starting, and Mitchell Robinson was the backup. Yeah, Mitchell Robinson was the back, but then he got hurt, and then uh, Simmons came along, right? Right. But they, do they play? I think they play the same position. Yeah, he played the same position. So, um, my next question would be, brother, Julius Randle, man. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Julius, bro. I forgot about Julius Randle, man. Nah, yo, damn, that's a that's another addition right there. But at the same time, though, man, it's like Julius got to go back to his Laker days. He got to go back to his Laker days, but he's banging. But I don't think he's gonna really be able to do that though, because that three point arsenal was there. You know, that's gonna be difficult. They gonna might have to get rid of Julius Randle though. But why? Why? Uh, but are you on that get rid of Julius Randle wave though? Nah, not right now though. I gotta see what it looked like by All Star break. I got to see what it's looking like. My thing with Julius, man, he balls out regular season, but come playoffs, man, he he don't show up, bro. That's my only take when it concerns him. Not really. Him. Not really because that one season, he, they did all right in the playoffs. And that was before Jalen Brunson. And he ain't had nobody. Like, uh, Julius Randle ain't had, ain't had nobody the year before. Who did he have on the team? He had freaking uh, R.J. Barrett was his number two. Like, come on, man. And he took them to the playoffs. So, you know, I got to give Julius Brunson. I mean, I got to give Julius Randle a little bit more time. Okay. I got to give him so, some so, time. So, so you because happy. He ain't, he ain't, because, yo, at the end of the day, he ain't never shown me nothing that he he he, he ain't doing good. He never showed me that he, he, he slouched. So, even in the playoffs, I mean, he had to freaking jack up all those threes. He had to, you know what I'm saying, try to make his presence, fat, his presence felt, you know? Because, you know, but he going to be all right. How you feel about RJ Barrett, man? RJ He's no longer with us. He ain't no longer with us. So better. when you say that, you know, Julius Randle ain't have nobody. Yeah. That's what's making me ask this question. Yeah. You felt like it was a good trade to get rid of RJ Barrett? Hell yeah, man. RJ Barrett, man. My man OG and Anobi. Yeah. It's like three, three or four, three RJ Barrett's. You know what I'm saying? Like my man knocks down every he knocks down every shot. You know what I'm saying? He clutched with that. His defense is clutch. You know what I'm saying? RJ, my man knocked down everything. He hit five in a row. You mean OG, not RJ. No, RJ. He, he knocked down five in a row, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. You know what I'm saying? He disappeared the whole game. OG, he come through. He knocked down his shots. Then he playing defense. Then he getting rebounds. You know what I'm saying? They not just beating him up in the air, beating him up in the box and all that and just taking him to the rack. No, they not doing that to OG. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like what happened with what happened with uh what you call it? What happened with him in Toronto? You know what I mean? RJ and uh RJ and uh Quickly. Quickly. They disappeared, bro. They they disappeared, man. They they, they didn't have a good season in, in, in with the Raptors. When they first got over there, they was doing their thing. But as soon as people start figuring them out and they start playing them more, they start getting shut down. That's what that's what it is with the league. You gotta be able to adjust. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like RJ didn't have those different factors to affect the game in different ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, his offense might be really good, but his defense was always faltering to where he was wasting so much energy on defense, he wasn't able to get back on offense and really be an integral part of the offense. And he wasn't able to finish. That, that'd be the thing, though, sometimes. It's like you got, you could get to the right, you could do everything, 
But being able to finish is the, is the ultimate goal. And I feel like OG got that that physicality to be able to finish around the rim whenever he needs to. So you you high on defense when we speak of that at NBA? Oh for, oh, for sure. Because at the end of the day, defense is offense. I, I believe defense is offense. Whether it, whether it be uh, 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 limiting second chance shots, whether it be uh, getting blocks and creating fast breaks. You know what I'm saying? Because once because once 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 the team is able to score, they are able to kind of set up their defense. You know what I'm saying? So once your defense is able to limit that first chance shots, you able to attack them on a whole nother level. You know? Mm. So, you know, defense turns into offense. Defense turns into offense. Turns into offense all the time because you're able to catch the other team off guard. You know? Okay. Whether that be morale, because you won't you won't feel you won't feel upset if you miss after you miss two or three shots. Okay. What comes to mind when I mention McBride? Deuce McBride. Oh yeah, no, nah, no, nah, and I meant to mention him too. He he right here, him right there is a is a is an X Factor. He's the X Factor. He's like that guy who was the best. You like, yeah, yeah, we bring him off the bench. So he you give me a So time. so are you high over him over quickly? Definitely. I mean I mean uh, if you was to compare them to I mean quickly, it, what do Deuce got that you feel quickly? Nah, his defense. I mean, because the Deuce came out of the came out of the league from West Virginia. He came from West Virginia with that defense, and I remember him. I remember him at, at West Virginia. I remember him at, at, at college basketball, and I liked him. You know what I'm saying? And he was a a, a balanced player. He give you twenty. You know, give you eight rebounds and give you three steals. You know what I'm saying? And, and he affected the game in a lot of ways. And he was a big shot guy. He, you know, he came through with the shots. And I um and, and I and I I'm enjoying his his improvement these last couple seasons. You know what I mean? Because the first season he wasn't really able to consistently knock down that three point shot. But now this season right here, you know what I'm saying? You see, you see, he elevated. He elevated. You know what I'm saying? Once he knocked down one, he liable to knock down another three in a row. Now this is my question, right? I'm glad you said that because mm-hmm. you said he elevated. But I want to play devil advocate. Did he really elevate it, or was his game always there? He just didn't have the opportunity. I when mean, we speak of that of Tom Dibodeau, because Tom Dibodeau, some say, doesn't rotate his players the way he should. Mm-hmm. And only time the next man is up, someone got hurt. He waits for a man to be injured to let him up. <laughs> How do you feel about Tom Dibodeau as a head coach, man? Oh, man, Tom Thibodeau, man. I don't know, man. Tom is weird. You know, Tom is weird because his defensive prowess is really on point. I feel like his offense, and that's why I feel like assistant coaches kind of come into play right there. Because 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 I like that. I feel like we get at our uh, Mo Cheeks as an assistant coach. Oh, you feel he's coming, Maurice Cheeks? Yeah. I feel I heard that. I heard that Maurice Cheeks is coming. And that right there is going is going to elevate our guards to a whole other level, because whenever he, he get his hands on some guards, he's able to kind of take they because he was a big guard himself, Mo Cheeks. He was a big guard himself, so I feel like he's going to be able to elevate. He's going to be able to elevate they 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 stuff. You know what I mean? And um, it's, it's going to be it's going to be difficult though. It's going to be it's going to be hard. For, for, for Deuce to – but it's not going to be difficult because he's going to be able to get himself in the rotation because his defense, his defense, you know. He's so, going to be able to get himself in the rotation. But to piggyback on Tom Thibodeau, uh-huh. you don't like him as a coach. No, nah, it's not that I don't like him as a coach because his success, you know what I'm saying, is undeniable. You know what I mean? He, he has success as a coach. He's not a losing coach. He's not a losing coach, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, well, where else are you going to go right now? You know, unless you really go, because unless you're going to go super young, you know what I'm saying? You're going to go with somebody that has a, a whole nother fresh outlook on the game and stuff like that, you know? All right, and I'm about to close out. And before I do, man, with this team that we're assembling right now for this upcoming season, yeah. are we ready to face the NBA champions? When we speak it out of the Boston Celtics. Or do you feel we still need some pieces? No, we definitely need some pieces, though. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to start in five, you know? We got to start. We got to start in five. And um, we need we need, we need, need a good eight. 
You need a good eight or nine. You need a ten man rotation, a nine and ten. I feel like an eight and nine man rotation, man. We should be all right. You know what I'm saying? A good, a good solid players. You know what I mean? We got good solid players. We got, we got, we got a good five. So we got Josh Hart. We got Jalen Brunson. We got Mikael Bridges. We got uh, Divincenzo. And then OG Anobi. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yo, we got old. Oh yeah, old. Oh, so they not starting. So we might have a good eight. A good eight. Cause them four. Then we got Julius Randle. Them, them four plus Julius Randle, OG, Mitchell Robinson, Deuce McBride. Yeah, that's a good little rotation right there. We just need to get a little bigger though. You know, we need to get a little bigger. And I feel like um we we, we definitely be able to to uh to 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 compete with them because uh what's his name um. What's his name again? The white boy on uh um the Celtics? Uh, uh that was on the Knicks before? Chris Pazingas. Chris Pazingas. It's a rap for him. He ain't it's, it's, he ain't he ain't gonna really be able to keep up. You know? With they, the, with the squad we got. With the squad we got and with the with the league and stuff like that, because the Celtics had it easy this year. The Celtics had a nice little ride through the playoffs, you know, and, and the Dallas State wasn't gonna beat them. The Dallas didn't have a good support. The Dallas had a good support and cast, you know, and they played good at the beginning. But once they put a little bit of pressure on them, they wasn't going P.J. Washington, freaking, uh, who else? The other dude, you got two rookie, two rookie centers. They was going, and, and they were, they were, they were kind of hurt too. Now, I'm going to bring it back to the Knicks. You're absolutely right about that. Free throws, man. Some say free throws are very important, man. You, you screamed out defense, I agree. But free throws. I want to piggyback on that Knicks versus the Pacers. I feel the Knicks was supposed to win that series, but the free throws fucked us up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that messed us up that series, you know? And um, I can't even really remember it. I, I think we was up 3-1, and then they just came back in one of the I last think it was two. 2-1? Two, I think we was up 2-zip. Two 2-zip, zip, and then they came back, you know? And... Um, we lost that series. Hey, yes, we did, brother. And who did the Pacers? Uh, and the Pacers played the uh, the Celtics. Yeah, and got Pacers swept. The Celtics, they got swept. That's what I'm saying, man. And then because Jalen Brunson got hurt, that's yeah. the only reason why we lost that joint. Jalen got hurt. Freaking Josh Hogg got hurt. Freaking uh, OG and OV. OG OG got hurt. That's the only reason why we lost that series, yo. But you think we back and stronger than ever? Yeah, I think so. All right, and that's what it is, man. All right. State your name. Let them know who you be before we sign off. All right, Ibrahim Hussein from Harlem. We out here. All right. West side, east side. Oh, shit. Peace.